Howdy, y'all. It's Miss Christina here. And are you ready for another adventure? Let's see. I've got my cowgirl hat on. There's a farmhouse in the background. What do you think we could be doing today? If you said exploring a farm, you are correct. Now let's see. Today, we will be meeting some different farm animals and talking about their different characteristics. This means we'll be talking about things that make them special and ways we can identify them. For example, if you said, Miss Christina, what are some of your characteristics? I could say, I have brown eyes, brown hair, and I'm short. Now let's meet some of our different farm animals and talk about their characteristics. Okay, up first, we have some cute little chicks. Chicks are born with only one tooth. It's hard work getting out of their shell, hatching an egg, so they use their tooth to help them get out. And then as soon as they hatch, they say, thanks tooth, but I don't need you anymore. And their tooth falls out and their beak forms, and then they use their beak to help them eat. A young female chick is called a pulley, and a young male is called a cockerel. All right, let's see what happens when these chicks grow up. Oh, now we have some chickens. As you may know, an adult female chicken is called a hen, and only the females can lay eggs. An adult male is called a rooster, excuse me, and he is the one who says, a cock a doodle doo. He makes a lot of noise. And although chickens have feathers, they are not excellent flyers. They can only fly short distances. There are actually hundreds of different breeds of chickens and their place of origin, skin color, feather color, size, and egg color is what differentiates them. Those are their different characteristics. All right, let's keep cruising along our farm and see what animals we can find. <gasps> Who is this? You're right, it is a cow. Now this fella is very, very popular on the farm. One of their characteristics is their thick, leathery skin. They have what we call a very complex or complicated digestive system. You may have heard people say that they have four stomachs, but that's actually not true. They only have one big stomach with four compartments. So they have a lot going on in their tummies. They are herbivores, which means that their diet consists of mostly grass, legumes, clover, alfalfa, and hay. They only eat plant type things. They don't eat any meat. And a baby cow is called a calf. Oh, look at that cute little baby cow. Hi, calf. All right. And let's talk about why cows are so important on farms. We're going to talk about some dairy farming. What does it look like this woman has here? Yes, she is pouring milk. So with dairy farming, each day, the cow is milked two to three times per day. And this takes mm, about six minutes. All 50 states in the United States have dairy farming. And we don't only get milk from dairy farming, we can also get cheese. All right, next up we have our goats. Now they look a little bit like sheep, so people often get them confused, but you can tell the difference because a major characteristic of our goats are the horns. All right. They are also herbivores, which means, hmm, do they eat meat? No, you're correct. They don't eat meat. They eat veggies, plants, fruits, things like that. And these are very strong animals. They can survive in harsh or tough conditions. This includes high up on mountains or with scarce or limited food. And baby goats are called kids, just like you. Oh, here is a lamb. A lamb is another word for a baby sheep. A female sheep is called a ewe, and a male sheep is called a ram. And an adult can weigh anywhere from 80 to 400 pounds. Like cows, sheep have a very complicated di digestive system. So it's not four stomachs, but it's one stomach with four compartments. 
And when the sheep gets old enough, it starts to have what we call wool, which is their kind of hair or fur, and it can be sheared or cut to make a sweater. So you might even have a wool sweater at home, which may have come from a sheep. What animal is next? <gasps> Who's that? You're right, it's a pig. Let's talk about our friend, the pig. They were among the first animals to be domesticated. Domesticated means that humans said, hey, pig, you look like you'd be a great animal to have around my farm. Come on. So animals like pigs and humans have been working together for a long, long time. They are also mammals like you and I and cows. They have no sweat glands. Oof. That means that when they get hot, what they do to cool off is roll around in the mud. They can grow anywhere from 300 to 700 pounds. Oh my goodness, that is a really large pig. They are very social, very smart, and they can survive in a variety of habitats. A variety means very many different types. So they can live in wetlands, temperate forests, grasslands, and even rainforests. Okay, let's keep walking through our farm, see who is next. What do you see here? Yes, we have found some horses. So these are animals that eat plants and grass and fruits only. So what, do that, what does that make them? Carnivores or herbivores or omnivores? If you said herbivores, you are correct. They like to eat grass, fruit, and leaves. And horses are pretty fast. They can run up to 40 miles per hour. Wow. Some other characteristics of horses are that they are black, brown, and white in color. Sometimes they can be all three colors in one horse. And they can even sleep standing up like our friends the giraffe. Oh, was that? Wah, wah. You're right, it's a duck. These like to live in rivers, lakes, and woodland wetlands. Ducks have webbed feet, which make them excellent, excellent swimmers. The male duck is called a drake, and female ducks are called hens. A group of ducks, like other birds, are called flocks or rafts. These ones are omnivores. Hmm. Well, we know carnivore means you eat meat, and herbivore means you eat plants and fruits. So what do we think omnivore means? That's when you eat a combination of both. So ducks like a little bit of plants, a little bit of fruits, but then they'll also eat frogs, insects, and shellfish. Okay, what's next? Let's walk through the farm and see if we can find some of the plants that are growing and being harvested. What's up first? Ooh, some delicious lettuce. Now, lettuce can be grown in many parts of the world, including Europe, Asia, and North America. Lettuce can come in many different types. It can be the color green, the color red, it can taste kind of bitter, or it can taste buttery. Now, what do you like to put your lettuce on? I know that I like to put my lettuce on a big juicy burger, <laughs> or you can have a healthy salad that's full of lettuce, or you can even have some tacos with lettuce on them. Oh, there we go. Delicious and nutritious. So lettuce is another very versatile vegetable, which means you can use it in a lot of different ways. Let's see what else we are harvesting out here. But first, let me just take off this cowgirl hat because it's acting crazy. Okay. Oh, it looks like, whoop, let's find some tomatoes. Oh, wow. Look at these beautiful, juicy, plump tomatoes. Now I see some green tomatoes in here. If they're green, it means that they're not ripe yet. They're still juvenile or young. And then when they turn red, it means that the tomatoes are ripe and ready to be picked or harvested and eaten. 
did you know that there are more than 10,000 varieties of tomatoes? <gasps> That's a lot of different types of tomatoes. Many consider them a vegetable, but since they have seeds, they're actually considered a fruit. Wow. Oh, let's see what's being harvested here. What do you think those are? Oh, it looks like they are some peppers. This is another vegetable that can be grown on a farm. And there are several types of peppers. You could have jalapeno peppers, bell peppers, cayenne peppers. Some peppers are spicy. Some peppers are not spicy. So there's a pepper out there for everyone. Oh, we're in a cornfield now. Corn is another very important crop. There are many varieties, but the two main types are field corn and sweet corn. Field corn is grown to feed cows, and sweet corn is grown to feed you and me. Now, field corn isn't grown just for cows. It's an important crop for all livestock. So other animals could include sheep, goats, and, oh, well, I already said cows, but those are the main ones. Let's see. Oh, grain. This is very important. Grain or wheat, and this is a harvesting machine helping to harvest so that people don't have to do everything by hand. Sometimes we need the help of big machinery to make our jobs a little easier. The wheat is another very important crop. Most of the world's land is actually devoted to wheat more than any other food crop. There are thousands of kinds of wheat and farmers harvest it using a machine called a combine. At the end of each stem of wheat are 20 to 100 tiny flowers. Let's see if we can zoom in close on some of the wheat. Yes. Wow. Let's talk about the different ways that we can eat wheat. I know what my favorite is. Mm, a big delicious bowl of pasta. What's your favorite way to eat wheat? You know, you could use flour and then you could bake some delicious cookies. I know that's a lot of people's favorite. Let me find some. Oh, there's some delicious chocolate chip cookies. Mm, mm. You could also use it for cereal. All right, let's see. Another very important thing that is grown out on the farm. What does it look like? If you said potatoes, you are correct. That's what's being harvested here. Let's talk about those important potatoes. One of the main food crops of the world. Lots of different ways to make them. Boiled, fried, baked, and they're even produced in over 100 countries. They're good for you. They have lots of vitamins and minerals. What's your favorite way to eat a potato? I'll tell you mine. French fries. You can also have some delicious mashed potatoes. Or you could just have sweet potatoes. You could even have plain potatoes, maybe a baked potato. They are another versatile crop, which means you could use them in many, many different ways. Whew, well, I don't know. I had burgers, french fries, spaghetti. I could use this something sweet from the farm. How about you? Okay, let's see if we can find something sweet. Hmm, walking around the farm. What do we see? Do you know what fruit that is? If you said watermelon, you are correct. And watermelon gets its name because it is actually 92% water. And you can grow this crop pretty quickly. It actually only takes 90 days, so three months, to grow from planting to harvesting. You can eat the watermelon rind. So the outside, I've never eaten the rind. Do you eat the rind? Mm, I don't eat the rind. Farmers in Japan have actually perfected a square watermelon. Whoa! I have never eaten a square watermelon. Have you seen one of those? We'll have to take a field trip to Japan to find a square watermelon. So that's our last one for today. Let's see. We're going to head back to our farm. What were some of your favorite animals that we saw today and learned characteristics about? We saw that cute little baby calf. And what does a calf grow up into? Well, a big cow. Yes, you are right. And they are very important for helping us humans to use dairy farming and get milk. That's correct. And then we have our cute little baby chickens that we saw today. 
and the chickens when they or the baby chicks excuse me when they grow up they become our chickens there's a nice little chicken all right well i hope you learned a lot today on our adventure and that you come back and visit soon for our next adventure bye bye